Joe Rogan astounded by very dark ADHD ad by pharmaceutical firms. Welcome everyone. In today's video, we're going to discuss Joe Rogan and Dr. Gaber Mata talk about the impact of childhood trauma, the problem with contemporary parenting advice, the rise in anxiety and autoimmune illnesses, the connection between trauma and addiction, the importance of psychedelics in treating mental illness, and much more. On an episode of the Joe Rogan Experience, Joe Rogan and Dr. Gaber Mate explain the true origin of anxiety. These reasons are, but before we proceed any further in the video, if you're new to this channel, remember, go ahead and to hit the bell icon to subscribe so you won't miss the informative videos we will upload in the future. This is the real cause of anxiety. Joe Rogan and Dr. Gaber Mate. Mata discussed how businesses created goods that would make their customers depend on them. Joe Rogan compared these businesses to drug manufacturers. That's extremely dark, remarked Rogan. Moreover, these are pharmaceutical firms. Mata outlined the defining traits of ADHD, but he refused to accept that it was heritable or an illness. Rogan concluded that diversion was his last remaining option. They both agreed that it was a coping method. Let's dig deeper into their conversation. The medical community and many so-called experts view ADHD as a sickness, one of these inherited disorders, and even claim that it is the most heritable mental illness there is, and I assert that it is neither a disease nor inherited. Even though some of my children were diagnosed with it, I immediately realized that this was not an illness and that it is not heritable. Hence, disengagement is not an illness. I'd like to ask you a query. What would be your options for dealing with that and with me if I were to push your buttons right now, causing stress, emotional trouble, or tension for you? You had three options, fight, run, or fight back. But what if you were without those choices? Then you are helpless. Now that you're stuck like that, what does your brain do? It switches off. In other words, it serves as a coping strategy. My infancy was spent in a highly stressful and challenging environment for the first year or so. Babies cannot avoid absorbing their parents' stress. They have no choice. What carries forth a baby? Could I have run away or retaliated? Can you have? We had no choice but to ignore. However, when does this tuning out occur? When the human brain is developing, and our brain, which is the component no one ever taught me in medical school, is affected by our surroundings as it grows. So the relationship with the parents is actually the most important aspect of the environment that affects the neural circuits of the human brain. Also, children's brains develop normally if the parents are available, emotionally aware, and present. But what can they do if the parents are stressed out and the youngster takes that tension on? They switch off. The brain then becomes taught to tune out, and 10 or 50 years later, we declare that the person has the disorder. Not at all, no. You have a coping technique that, while it once had a purpose, is no longer effective for you. If a family brings an ADHD child to me, I will tell them that they have a very sensitive child on their hands. The pressures and energies in your household are being picked up by that sensitive child. You want to assist this kid, then take care of the entire family. Consider the bond between the parents. Examine the sources of stress in your life. Take note of your response to the child. Consider whether you truly understand the child's conduct and emotions, or whether you are merely attempting to control the child's actions. Look at everything. After reading my book on ADHD, parents frequently tell me that their relationship with their child has completely changed, which then causes the child to change. What a surprise. Yet when you visit a doctor, they typically say, you have this disease. Here's a medicine. If the brain is treated properly, it can change. As a result, our dependence on drugs reflects a fundamental lack of spirituality, inventiveness, and medical education. The typical doctor will never learn this information. The typical doctor never attends even one course on how the brain develops in relation to its environment. They rarely ever hear about trauma, let alone experience it. As a result, when they see an adult with ADHD, depression, addiction, bipolar disorder, or anything else, they don't think of trauma. Instead, they just think of this sickness. Many also believe that the diagnosis explains everything, yet this is untrue. Because consider this. 
Suppose Gaber or Joe visit a doctor and are given an ADHD diagnosis. So what are the symptoms of ADHD? Dice engagement, poor impulse control, and perhaps hyperactivity. Why does Gaber lack restraint, be hyperactive, and tune out, mostly due to his ADHD? How can we be certain he has ADHD? Considering his lack of impulse control, tendency to tune out, and hyperactivity, why does he lack impulse control, be hyperactive, and tune out? He has ADHD. How can we be certain he has ADHD? Because, well, it's circular, it explains nothing, and it doesn't explain anything at all. Diagnoses provide descriptions of objects and are therefore useful. Nevertheless, they offer no explanation. We have a brain circuit for panic and sadness, according to the late highly respected neuroscientist Jock Panksepp. When care isn't available, young people or young animals typically react with panic and grief. The child's panic circuits are therefore activated when the parents are under stress or otherwise preoccupied due to events in the economy or politics, their own unresolved trauma, or anything else going on in their lives, and they fail to respond to the child's distress, do not pick up the child when they are crying, or leave the child alone when the child is upset. This is as it should be because when a child's panic circuits are activated, they cry out for assistance. Hence, it is essential for survival. While the parent animal is absent, the young animal should become anxious. That child would be addressed in a sane and reasonable world. Yet, when children in our society are not attended to when they are in distress, panic sets in, and you end up with a lot of anxious adults. And as a result, more children are receiving diagnoses. You're correct, it's an environmental response rather than a sickness. The idea is that since the child's conduct is the issue, it needs to be controlled in order to be fixed. In reality, the reverse is true. Since you're showing the child that the world is safe, they don't need to be worried about it, and they can just ask for help if you pick up the child when they're in distress. Whether it's physical or emotional, you're teaching them that. Also, it doesn't reinforce the manipulative, sobbing behavior. How it operates, in his book, The Growing Mind, UCLA psychiatrist and prolific author and researcher Dr. Daniel Siegel claims that children use the adult brain's developed circuits to control their own developing, uncontrolled circuits. So, the child downloads the parent's calm, loving presence into his own neural system. He will eventually turn into an adult who is capable of taking care of himself or herself. He won't be a baby forever. It happens naturally. Children don't need to be taught how to be independent. Independence comes naturally because parents will eventually pass away. The mother bear will eventually leave the cub alone. Therefore, it must be capable of taking care of itself with maturity and assurance. Nature has a natural agenda like that. In order for the baby bear to mature, the mother bear needs to take care of its needs. Thus, if we provide for the child's requirements, they will grow out of that helpless position and develop a sense of self-control and calm confidence in their own abilities. Yet, when parents don't pick up their children, they are teaching them that the world is close to them, that they are powerless, and that they are alone. That's all for today's video. Don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos from our channel. Thanks for watching and see you all soon.